Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a great day. And for my Canadian listeners, happy holiday. Hope you guys are enjoying your day off, for those of you who have the day off. Anyways, guys, uh, before I get started, I just wanted to take the time to straighten out a possible situation. Okay, so it's come to my attention that when I say, okay, guys, I think I've got time for another little one, that maybe some of you get irritated with that because it's like, wow, she's sacrificing some time for us by giving us another little five-minute story. Okay, so that was hurtful, but that's not the case at all. Um, If I say, okay, guys, I think I've got time for another story, it's because I have another story to read. It really has nothing to do with time. Uh, As I said to this person, if I had a mailbag filled with stories, like some channels do have, I would be so happy to keep going. I honestly would. If I could read for an hour or two every day, I would. But I just don't have the stories. So after I'm finished reading and I have an extra story, I'll gladly read it. So um, I hope that I haven't uh, made you guys misunderstand me when I've said that. um, Because I certainly didn't. I don't mean to say, okay, guys, I think I'll just do another story for you. Not that case at all. I had another lovely lady comment that she thought maybe my device could only do a certain length of videos. So I just wanted to straighten that out. Like if I get, you know, five or 10 stories sent in to me, I've developed a fear now that I better stretch them out because I might not have stories to do next week. So I'm very careful with the stories. And then also I want to point out as well that uh, because I do hear about from people that say, you know, I sent you a story, but you didn't read it. First of all, I don't know why, but I don't get all the stories that are being sent to me uh, because when you inquire about it, I do check. And for whatever reason, I don't have them or I do have them. And I've put them aside to read because they're, you know, either really super long or they're really super short. But the facts of the matter are this. I can honestly say that 100% of you are here to listen to Bigfoot stories, Dogman stories, and so on. Some of you enjoy hearing about the paranormal stuff, ghost stories, and uh, the UFO stuff. But I can pretty much promise that if I just started reading a bunch of paranormal stuff, ghost stories, and UFO stuff, that most of you would drop off. And I don't want to see that happen. So I have to cater to, you know, the interests, your guys' interests, which are the Bigfoot stories. Then sometimes I can, you know, add a UFO story or add a ghost story after that. And so I'm trying to keep everybody happy. Uh, But unfortunately, a lot of people are sending in their paranormal stuff. And I'm definitely keeping it because I feel like one of these days it's going to fit into some some good place. So having said that, guys, I hope I straightened that all out. And I hope everybody understands that I'm not on a time frame at all. It's just trying to fit stuff in and to make sure I have content, you know, for the foreseeable future. Um, You guys, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's all about you and what you guys want from this channel. And I am definitely open to hearing your thoughts, the things you like and you don't like. I just think it's better to do this honestly instead of in a negative light. Oh boy, so while I'm at it, I might as well mention this too. I will not in any way or form be offended if you skip these little blurbs of mine. Just go forward. Nobody will never know. I'll never know. Um, I just, I, it bothers me to see some people in the comment section, you know, giving timestamps of when all my rambling is over with and the videos actually start. 
Anyways, that's just, it's just silliness, but skip forward. I will not be offended at all. You guys know you're a huge part of my life and I love you so much. I just want to make you happy. Okay, kids, on with the story. Okay, so I have decided we haven't uh, visited with our friend Barton Nunnally in a while. So I've picked uh, Bigfoot in Kentucky to choose from. And I've decided to start with Boone County. So this one's a really good story. I was excited to start this one now that I've finished all my ranting and raving. Okay, according to uh, the Kentucky Post, members of the Jones family encountered a shorter version of the creature, perhaps a young male, one night in March of 1980. The incident took place in Boone Bone Lick, Kentucky. Boone Bone Lick, Kentucky. Okay, the birthplace of paleontology, Boone County. The creature was reportedly only four to five feet tall, weighing an estimate of 300 pounds, with broad shoulders and a flat face. It was bold enough to approach the family's mobile home, shaking the door and causing much alarm. When the thing attempted to overturn the trailer, it was fired on by the man of the house, to no effect. It simply ran away on all fours and effected its escape by leaping into the nearby Ohio River and swimming north. Police investigating revealed nothing save for the fact that the area has a history of monster activity. The Jones family alone claims to have several more run-ins with this creature on the property. Several articles about sightings of this creature in the area are known to have been written. The following is a reprint from the Creature Chronicles No. 2, Summer of 1980 issue. Subject, Large Black Unknown Animal Sighted on 3-31-80 at 12.30 to 1 a.m. and on 4-1-80 at 11.30 p.m. Big Bone, Kentucky in Boone County approximately 25 miles south of West Cincinnati, Ohio. Witnesses Jackie Jones and Dave Stultz, 283 AA Ryle Road, investigator Ron Schaffner and Earl Jones and John Daly. Police investigators, Officer Prindle, Officer R. Myers, and Officer J. Whalem, and Deputy Sheriff J. Fisk. 3 3180. Jackie, Dave, and son Jason were ready to retire for the night when they suddenly heard an unusual sound coming from the boat dock. They said the noise sounded like a combination of a lion and elephant roar. Jackie turned on the outside light, which connected to the boat dock, and when they saw the outline of something moving in the weeds... The object was estimated to be between 2 to 3 feet wide, around 300 pounds, 5 feet in height, and seemed to have a flat face. However, no eyes, ears, or snout could be seen due to the darkness. The two witnesses also said that this animal tried to jerk their trailer home around, as if trying to push it over. Dave decided to go out and investigate. When the animal advanced towards him, he got scared and shot at the creature with a shotgun. The creature appeared to jump back into the river, the Ohio River backwater, and quietly swam towards the east. On 4180, Dave was talking on the phone with investigator Earl Jones when something was heard outside the trailer. Jackie called for Dave and again he went outside to see what the disturbance was and hoping to get a better look this time. At this point, Jackie began to talk with Jones in a nervous and frightened manner. She was worried about her son possibly being harmed by this creature. Meanwhile, Dave saw the creature jump over a ditch and again escaping into the water. Previous encounters in June of 79, the same trailer was occupied by Vicki Jones, Jackie's sister, She had an intercom connected to the boat dock and was hearing strange sounds, and they kept getting louder. Her dog began to howl and seemed scared of something. 
Then, all of a sudden, her trailer started shaking. The dishes started to fall off the shelves. Was this the same animal or something else? Through local legends and old newspaper clippings, John Daly found out that this creature was also seen in 1950. He was also able to find several articles on the creature and was seen in the area on several occasions over the years. The name, Satan, was dubbed by the local residents. Case findings slash conclusions, no definite physical evidence was ever found other than the spent bullets from Dave's shotgun that were found lodged in a tree down by the river. So Dave did fire off a few rounds, as he claimed. Various markings on the ground could not be distinguished as any prints. The Boone County Recovery Team sent divers into the river, but could not find any evidence. Earl did not hear anything unusual while talking with Jackie. We are left with the testimony of two witnesses, who seemed very sincere and still frightened as they relayed their encounters to us on separate occasions. Their story never changed. We never mentioned the term Bigfoot because that fact was never established. However, the Boone County police officers asked us about the possibility. One Richwood, Kentucky woman allegedly had a run-in with a Bigfoot creature in the summer of 1994 in the backyard of her home in Arbor Glen Estates subdivision. She was out walking her dog, Charlie, she claimed, when he suddenly stopped and began growling at the fence line beyond which was a small creek. She looked, and straight in front of her, about 50 feet on the other side of the fence, was a most unusual and frightening figure. I distinctly remember the creature, she later said. He was tall, well over six feet high. He was an off-white color with shaggy hair that dangled a little bit, maybe three to five inches long in places. The face was a mix between a human and primate, not an ape, not a human dressed up. It stood up from a squatting position and looked at her, revealing a muscular body with short neck and long arms that reached mid-thigh. After staring at each other for a few minutes, the witness claimed the thing just turned and ran off into the woods. She felt obliged to do the same, straight back inside her house. The witness also claimed that her father had seen a similar creature, also tall and off-white colored. Sometime earlier, near a creek in Shady Lane in Crittenden, Kentucky, nighttime yowlers were also heard in Constance, Kentucky in 1995. And that's the end of that story. And guys, I think I have time for another one. I'm just teasing. I do have time for another one. Okay, so the next one is from Boyd County. I will always remember this because it still sends shivers down my spine, wrote Ashland, Kentucky resident Don C., full name on file. It was just after midnight one evening back in August of 94. My boyfriend and I were driving to his house from mine, and we were on I-68. This was when I-68 had no homes built and no street lights as it does now. I was talking to my boyfriend when I noticed he was really quiet. He slowed down and said, Did you see that? And I said, See what? He hid his brake lights, and when I turned around and looked out the back window, I saw a seven to eight foot tall shadow from the lights looking at us while it was crossing the road. I was terrified, and he hit the gas, and we were gone. I know what we saw, and it was a Bigfoot. Dawn further described the thing as being covered with dark brown to black hair all over its body. Two more Ashland residents, this time a mother and her son, witnessed an extremely tall creature with long, stringy hair as it crossed a road one night in 1998. According to the mother, its stride was so immense that the monster crossed the road a distance of less than 20 feet easily in only two steps. Ashland is an extremely active area for hairy monsters, it seems. 
Seven years earlier in 1991, a similar creature, also described with long, stringy hair, chased two witnesses to their car as they were investigating a local haunted bridge. It ran on all fours as well, but when it stood up, they claimed it was at least 16 feet tall. A smaller version of the Bigfoot was seen in Boyd County by a local man, the Reverend Joshua Sparks, and his five-year-old son one October evening around 8 p.m. in 2006. My son and I were walking into the woods, Sparks later told me, off the county road known as Greenfield Road, which connects to Shop Creek and Hurricane Hollow. We had also recently discovered some tree breaks and teepee structures in that area. As we walked, my son pointed and said, Daddy, there's a Bigfoot. I said, where? And he pointed to a location about 50 yards above us on the ridge. There was a Bigfoot creature standing at the top of the ridge. It acknowledged that we were there with a grunt. It then proceeded to break in a half small tree and began hitting a larger tree with a stick. We stood there frozen and not wanting to leave, then walked towards us and it let out a loud moan, scream, and grunted. I felt then that we had worn out our welcome and I took my son and slowly walked away. We were there maybe five minutes at most. Sparks described the creature as being covered with black hair, upright, at least seven and a half feet tall, and weighing about 350 to 400 pounds. It was dark, and my flashlight didn't grant me the ability to see its face, he said. It did have a distinct odor to it, an outdoor odor. An alleged Bigfoot print was found in Cattlesburg, also in Boyd County as well, in late January of 2007. After one family heard a disturbance outside their bedroom window the previous night. And that, my friends, is the end of that. And I hate to tell you this. I could keep going on, but I can't because I've got my granddaughter here and we need to make a trip to Walmart for some toys. Yes, some toys. Anyways, guys, you know I love you. And I hope to see you back here in a couple of days. So bye for now.